The oxymercuration demercuration of alkenes achieves the addition of water across a pi bond with Markovnikov regiochemistry in two steps. The first step uses mercuric acetate and water as reagents. THF or tetrahydrofuran is a common solvent. The net result of this first step will be the addition of mercury and a hydroxyl group across the pi bond. The mechanism for this first step of the reaction begins with the formation of the mercurinium ion. This entails three mechanistic arrows. The first shows the pi bond attacking the mercury. The second shows the loss of an acetate ligand. And the third shows that the mercury simultaneously adds to the carbon of the alkene that would otherwise have lost a bond. The net result is the formation of a three-membered ring involving mercury, in which the mercury bears a formal positive charge, hence the name mercurinium ion. Next, water attacks one of the two carbons of the mercurinium ion, displacing the mercury as the three-membered ring is opened. This results in an oxonium ion, which subsequently loses a proton, to form a product that has incorporated both oxygen and mercury, hence the name oxymercuration. It's worth noting that some textbooks will show the dissociation of an acetate ligand first, followed by the addition of this positive mercury species across the pi bond via both the red and the purple arrows. This makes no difference in the final oxymercuration product that is observed. It's just a slight variation in the way the mechanism may be drawn. It's also important to notice that the attack of water occurs from the side of the molecule that is opposite the mercury. Therefore, the oxymercuration step is an anti-addition. The second step of the process is known as demercuration. It entails treatment with sodium borohydride in basic media, and the end result is the replacement of the mercury with a hydrogen atom. Mechanistic arrows are typically not drawn for this step, which may involve single electron transfer. In this specific example, both the alkene substrate and the resultant mercurinium ion are symmetrical, so it does not matter which carbon of the mercurinium ion is attacked by water. The same product will result from attack at either carbon due to the molecule's symmetry. Demercuration completes the reaction by replacing the mercury with a hydrogen atom. Note that in this example, no stereocenters have been formed, so it's not necessary to draw the product using wedges and dashes. This representation of the product is the same as this representation of the product. When the alkene substrate is unsymmetrical, then we will have to pay more attention to regiochemistry. In this specific example, the reaction begins with the attack of the pi bond on mercury, which displaces an acetate ligand. Mercury simultaneously adds to the carbon of the alkene that would have otherwise lost a bond, and this forms the mercurinium ion. The attack of water occurs at the center with the greater partial positive charge, and this is the more highly substituted carbon of the mercurinium ion. The attack displaces mercury, and the oxonium ion that results sheds a proton to the medium to yield the oxymercuration product. If Markovnikov's rule is phrased more broadly as the alkene carbon possessing more hydrogens acquires the electrophile, then we can see that oxymercuration does in fact follow Markovnikov's mnemonic. In the alkene substrate, it is the terminal carbon that possesses more hydrogens. 
and it is the one that ultimately acquires the new bond to the electrophile which was mercury in this reaction. After demercuration, it is even more clear that this reaction proceeds with Markovnikov regioselectivity because we can see that the terminal carbon of the alkene, which possessed more hydrogens to begin with, has in fact acquired the new hydrogen during the course of the reaction. Again, this reaction has resulted in no stereocenters. So this representation of the product is the same as this representation of the product. Since two carbons of the reactant are involved in this transformation, it is possible that zero, one, or even two stereocenters can be formed during the reaction. Let's first consider a specific example in which a single stereocenter is formed. The alkene is flat. In other words, both alkene carbons have trigonal planar geometry. So the mercurinium ion can be formed on either face, that is to say, either side of the alkene, giving enantiomeric mercurinium ions. Water then opens both of these mercurinium ions by attacking from the side opposite that which bears the mercury. The result is two enantiomeric oxonium ions, each of which loses a proton to the medium to form two enantiomeric products of oxymercuration. In the demercuration step for this particular substrate, one stereocenter is destroyed because this carbon now bears two hydrogens. As a result, the products are the two enantiomeric alcohols, S and R2-butanol. Now let's consider a specific example that results in the formation of two stereocenters. This reactant bears a deuterium atom, which is an isotope of hydrogen. Deuterium is nearly the same as hydrogen, However, because it is not identical, hydrogen and deuterium count as different substituents. This will be important as we consider the stereochemistry of the products. The reaction begins with the formation of enantiomeric mercurinium ions when mercury adds across the alkene pi bond from either above or below the plane of the ring. Each mercurinium ion is then attacked by water at its tertiary center. This is the center that bears the greater partial positive charge and therefore draws in the weak nucleophile. In each instance, this opens the three-membered ring and the oxonium ion that results sheds a proton to the medium yielding two enantiomeric oxymercuration products labeled as A and B. During the demercuration step, the stereochemistry of the new CH bond, shown in red, is randomized. As a result, oxymercuration product A yields two stereoisomeric alcohols labeled C and D. Oxymercuration product B also undergoes the same randomization, yielding stereoisomeric alcohols labeled E and F. As a consequence, all four stereoisomeric alcohols are produced. And by examining the results closely, we can see that alcohols D and F are enantiomers of one another. They have the opposite configuration at each and every stereocenter. Alcohols C and E are also enantiomers of one another. They too have the opposite configuration at each and every stereocenter. Any other comparison of products would be diastereomeric in nature. In summary, 
oxymercuration demercuration adds water across the pi bond of an alkene with Markovnikov regiochemistry. The oxymercuration step occurs with anti-stereochemistry. However, the stereochemistry of the new CH bond is randomized during demercuration. Therefore, if stereocenters are created, both configurations will be possible at any new stereocenter. Since oxymercuration demercuration does not involve a carbocation intermediate, no carbocation rearrangement is possible, and this provides a distinct advantage over acid catalyzed hydration, which also proceeds with Markovnikov regioselectivity but is vulnerable to carbocation rearrangement. It's also worth noting that this reaction can be performed with an alcohol in place of water as a reagent. The transformation is nearly identical except for the fact that an alkoxy group or an OR group will be added instead of an OH group. Consequently, this variation is called alkoxy mercuration demercuration and its product is an ether instead of an alcohol. The preceding has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, a color-coded approach to arrow pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback format from Amazon and in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.